Hi guys, it's me again, Miss Valerie Rivas, the CEO and founder of Royale Classy Creations, where we create customized classy designs that showcase our clients' individual style, leaving their guests astounded. I am so glad to come to you today with this DIY tutorial. People have asked for this and asked for this, and we finally did it. So I'm so excited to show you guys this. Um, so we're going to be doing our giant foam letters. Yes, those letters that you can use for the sweets tables. We are going to be doing that for you today. So round of applause. Yay. Okay, so um, just wanted to give you a little bit of information about this. The easiest way that we do these is what we're showing you. These can also be done your own way. So what we're showing you is just basic tools to use when you want to do this, if you want to do them for yourself. So just because we do it a certain way does not mean that that way is good for you. But we just want to give you an idea kind of of what we do. Um, I am not a person that uses a lot of measurements and things of that nature I, um, that's not my skill I, that's not my calling so I don't do that okay so uh, what you're gonna see is me kind of utilizing my skills and what I know and how this has worked out for me um, so I wanted to let you guys know a couple of things so the stencil that we use for these letters um, you can get these done one or two ways. If you have a projector at home, it's probably going to be your easiest and cheapest way to do this. So if you have a projector at home, you can project that letter on your wall and you can trace it out. Now, if you haven't seen my masquerade mask um, video, you can go back and look at that and it'll kind of give you um, the, uh, the way of doing that give you a way of doing that um, also you can get them printed out at a office depot or office max or kinko's or, or something of that nature um, any printing company will be able to print them out for you now the problem with that is you're probably going to pay about $45 per letter because of the size of the letters so that's kind of up to you if that's what you want to do so um, then the other thing is we use a regular foam board from Dollar Tree. If you've seen most of my videos, I use Dollar Tree foam board, especially if it's something that I know it's not going to be a uh, long-term use. It's just temporary. It's just the cheaper way to go. So, um, and then I try to use Dollar Tree items as much as I can. Now for the, uh, styrofoam cups, I do get those from... A company called Brown Core that's B R O W N C O R and I found that they were cheaper coming from them than me actually going to Sam's Club and getting um, the cups so it's uh, the 16 ounce cups and I can get a thousand dollars a thousand sorry a thousand cups in a box at Brown Core for $26 but if I go to Sam's Club, I only get 500 in a box for $26. So um, that's how I try to find uh, cheaper, uh, cheaper materials. So uh, you guys, if you're doing this, then just search around. If it's something that you're going to be doing long term, um, making these letters, then search around to see if you can find them cheaper. Okay, so with that being said, and I don't want to talk too much, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Oh, and thank you guys for subscribing. I have so many new subscribers. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for sharing all of my um, DIY tutorials. And I am going to be trying to um, upload more videos for you guys. It's been really busy, so... Um, 
I'm trying to do this as much as possible now. So hope to see you guys soon. All right, guys. So we're going to get started by using the stencil um, that I have cut out using regular wrapping paper that I had around the house. Uh, you guys can use any kind of paper if you need something sturdier. I've been doing this for so long that it's very easy for me. But if you need something sturdier, you can use the poster boards that they have at the Dollar Tree to cut your stencils out. And you can use those over and over again. Um, as you can see, these are kind of beat up. I've been using them for a very long time. So um, if, if you need anything sturdier, like I said, you can use that poster board. Um, also, uh, like I uh, stated before, you can use a projector and just project it off the wall and trace it out, or you can have them printed at Office Depot or Office Max. So as you can see, I'm just tracing that stencil onto my foam board. And I have this going the long way, so it's going to be 30 inches in height and about 18 inches in width. Okay guys, so now we have that all traced out. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our X-Acto knife or box cutter and we're just going to cut along those lines and make sure you stay as close to those lines as possible so that you have straight lines and, and it will make it a lot easier when you go to do your cleanup later. Now those scrap pieces, you want to go ahead and save those because you're going to need those later. You can always use them on other projects or you can use them on the smaller sizes that you need for this particular project. So you always want to save your scrap pieces. Now I'm just finishing this up, getting that last piece out of there, and that's from the middle. So then we're going to go and we're going to work on the last piece on the end. Again, I'm just making sure that I make precise cuts so that it's nice and even and smooth. Okay guys, so we got all that cut out. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler, I'm using a leveler in this case, and then we're going to cut out the size that we want uh, for the depth of our letters. Now the depth that I'm using for my letters is 14 inches. So it's going to be about 14 and a half inches once I'm done putting everything together. Uh, 14 and a half to 15 somewhere in there um, once I finish putting everything together so that makes your letters 30 inches in height 18 inches in width and 15 inches in depth 
Now once you've done that, then you just cut your line using your ruler. You're going to cut your line and make it as straight as possible. And guys, again, I'm just using my ruler and I'm kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it's straight on both ends. And then we're going to cut that out. And this is what we're going to use as a template for the rest of our pieces. So I'll take this piece and I'll just cut the rest of my boards as needed with that piece so that I have the same measurement on all boards. So now what you see me doing is again I don't use any measurements of any kind my measuring is putting it on the letter and then I'm gonna put it on the end where I need it to be on the line and then the next line is where I'm gonna cut so where that opening is from end to end that's where I'm cutting it and that's as simple as I can do it it makes it easier for me because it's visual for me I, I'm a visual person so it's visual for me that I place it on there from end to end and then I cut So I'm just going to measure it again to see if it's in between that line that's end to end here. And that looks perfect. So now what I'm going to use is my glue gun. And I am going to put the glue right there on the end there, right on the edge. And I'm going to place that edge right there where we measured and put it as close to the edge of the letter, the cutout letter, as possible. That way, you don't have to do too much cleanup at the end because it's flush on the edge there and it makes it so much easier when you're cleaning up at the end trying to make those edges smooth. And guys, when I do this, I don't use my glue gun on the low heat. I use it on high heat because I feel personally if I use the high heat, then it bonds better and I don't have to worry about it coming apart. And I've had that problem before when I first started doing this, I used the low heat because of course that's what you're supposed to use. Um, but I noticed that they would come apart quicker if you use the high heat then they don't come apart they bond together a lot easier it's very time consuming but it's worth it in the end okay guys so I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I just did with my measurement I'm going to take my foam piece foam board piece I'm going to place it right there on the end and it's going to go end to end and then I'm going to mark where I want to cut I'm just going to line it up and then I'm going to cut that piece and that's going to be the piece for that end.
Okay guys, so we're doing the same thing we did before. We're using our glue gun here. And we're going to bind that piece to the end where we marked it off. Making sure that we get it nice and tight to the end. And now that we have that on, on our end, that's our end piece. Now we have these two pieces that need to be bonded together. So we're going to take our glue gun and we're going to go right along the edge so that we can get those pieces bonded together. It's just like putting a puzzle together, guys. You got to make sure the pieces match. And then it starts to get a little tricky because you're going to be doing this throughout the entire letter. You have to make sure that those puzzle pieces fit together perfectly. And you have to make sure that those corners are bonded together and secured tightly so that they don't start to fall apart on you. Because you're going to be placing treats on this table so you don't want your letters to start coming apart As you can see, nice and tight together, and we can move on. Now we're just going to continue the process all throughout the letter, guys. So we're doing our measurements here. And then we're going to cut and we're going to glue.
Now we're finished with our letter and what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a top piece for this so that we can have that ready once we're finished doing um, adding our cups to our our letter here. So what we're doing is we're just taking that, that completed letter and we're placing it on top of another piece of foam board and we're just going to trace it out just as we did the stencil. I found it better to do it this way because once you get everything placed um, together and bonded together then it changes the size and shape of the letters um, uh, uh, just a bit so it's best to do this step after you have completed everything and got it all bonded together and all the pieces together in their rightful places that way when you take this piece to place it on top of this letter it fits a lot better and a lot easier Okay guys, so we have that all done. Now we're going to start adding our styrofoam cups. Again, if you can find these cups cheaper anywhere besides Sam's Club, please look around so that you can do so because they can get really, really expensive. I'm not really sure how many cups go into each of the letters because all the letters are different so you may use more cups in one letter than another so I never counted it that way but I do know that if you make four letters such as baby and love I've used a thousand cups to make those four letters And there's no rhyme or reason or any kind of um, strategy or anything to use. You just take the cups and you put them in into the letter and you just make sure that you have them the height of the letter. Not that they're going over. So if you feel like you need to take one or two off, then you do that and you just place them in to fill up the letter. And they're just placed in stacks side by side in whatever space that you can find to fill the letter.
Okay, so now what you see me doing, guys, is I'm going to be cleaning up my edges here on the top so that I can place that uh, the piece that I need on the top to close the letter up. So I just need to clean those edges up to make sure they're level. So you can see me using my leveler to make sure that the sides are level as well. So I'm just placing it all around on sides that connect from one side to the other side to make sure it's level so that once I place my top on to close it it will fit nicely and flush against the edges and it will be level once I put put it together and close it up So now that we've cleaned everything up, we got everything level. Now we're going to start placing that top on so that we can close the letter up. And that's easy to do guys. All you have to do is line it up in the way that you cut it. Make sure your ends meet and you're level. And this is going to take a little bit of moving around, a little bit of patience to make sure that everything is good and leveled off and close together and the ends are meeting. And then once you get those all leveled off and you got it in the area that you need it to be, then we're going to hold it there and we're going to start with our glue gun. And I like to start in the middle because it makes it a lot easier when you get ready to go to the edges. So I like to start in the middle, especially when you have a lot going on in the middle, like you have all these different um, corners in the middle uh, with the E then it's best to start in the middle that way when you get to your edges it's not as hard to get those edges together so again like I said holding that into place I started with my glue gun and once I get that secured then I can go ahead and finish throughout
so we're just cleaning it up guys cleaning up those edges making sure they look nice and neat and flush together so that you don't have any edges that are sticking out or not flush with the other edges and again this takes a lot of patience so take your time guys if you're not in a rush you can make sure that it looks really nice and neat and you probably won't have to do this much but I'm a little OCD so I'm always doing a little extra don't judge me okay guys so here it is nice and clean and straight lines everything all flush again I'm a little OCD so I'm going over some more edges here but it's all going to be worth it in the end As you can see it's very nice very clean and I'm just cleaning it off for you so you can see thank you for watching guys